Number one, right? I've never been a big Reebok guy. I think most people that listen to this podcast or have heard me speak before in real life would know that I've got a bit of a love hate relationship with Reebok, mainly because I'm from East London. I'm from the quote unquote ends. I've hang I've hung around with people that generally wear Reeboks. You know when Reeboks didn't used to be cool and used to be associated with National Front and the BMP, right? I know where that image comes from, and it kind of has a sleep style taste in my mouth. But then the older you get, you change scenes and things to get you know appropriate in different areas. And now hipsters wear them, and you know quote, whatever with their black trousers and their white socks and their white dirty shoes. It's it's become like the athletic version of a Converse, right? And it still kind of lets the sour taste in my mouth. But these Reeboks from Packer, right? These Packer Grayscale Reebok um, Ast- Astrex look fucking incredible, right? They remind me of maybe some New Balance 990s, maybe. That's why I probably like them. But these look fucking incredible. So much so that I'd maybe consider getting a pair of Reeboks. I said I've never wear Reebok. I say it's kind of go against everything I stand for to wear a pair of Reeboks. Because if I wear a pair of Reeboks, just remind me of some fucking palace wanker wearing tracksuits and skateboarding down the street with a sovereign ring on. It kind of just annoys me to the fuck off, right? But there's something about these shoes that look fucking awesome. Maybe it's the fact that they look like New Balances. Maybe it's the color. It's the color blocking on them. Maybe it's the photography. Maybe it's the fact that they've got this little insert on the picture on them that makes the toe kind of flatten out a little bit. But regardless, I think these are easily one of my favorite um, releases that have come out recently. Um, so you've got mostly an all gray. Maybe it does remind me of a 990, right? Because it has in the front panel, it does have the kind of similar sort of thing that you'd see in a 990 here. The little front, little suede bit here in the front. But they look fucking awesome, man. Like, really, 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 really good. Um, they are coming out um, on Friday the 15th. They're priced at $115 um, and they're available on Packer Shoes. I really recommend you check them out. Um, it's an Aztec re- Aztec reissue, right? It says, yeah, since the Aztec was well-tuned reissue last year, the style has been sought after for its chunky silhouette and pays homage to the quintessential 90s style. But yeah, really amazing shoe. Probably one of my favorites has come out recently. I recommend you check it out. Again, this is what being a sneakhead's about, right? Getting models that aren't necessarily the most popular, most hypest thing, right? Doing away with Air Max 1s and Air Jordan 1s and Air Max 90s and 95s and Aida Superstar. All the bait shit, do them, put them to one side. Being a natural sneakhead is buying trainers like these and fucking, you know, sourcing them up as bait saying, you know what I mean? Incorporating them into your drip right making them look sick right that's where that's what being a sneakhead is in my uh, in my humble opinion i recommend you check these out um they're the packer uh grayscale aztecs from reebok they're available on friday from packershoes.com right that's one let's hide that screen let's come back here let's go to the next one what else have i said on tabs that i wanted to talk about here Ooh, yeah oakley and vetaman glasses right these are fucking awesome um I think these debuted, uh, I'm going to see, yeah, Spring Summer 2019, right? The one where, I think this is this is a collaboration where, um, this is for the collection where the models were working on the table. And I think this is Demna's kind of homage to his Georgian roots and, you know, kind of talk, spoke about the entire history of Georgia. A really kind of emotional collection of raw and I think it was outside of the models working on the table. But these glasses look fucking incredible. So they're effectively just, you know, the ochres that you'd see, um, um, somebody wearing in America where they're calling the police on some uh, um, black person because they're barbecuing or because they're playing music out in public. But then they've kind of spriced them up with fucking studs and really accentuated some of the colors with, you know, bright pops of neon and other kind of colors on them, translucent lenses. And they look fucking awesome. They look really fucking cool. I think I saw an image recently I, on um, matches.com that they're supposedly sold out of all of them and i think they were 800 dollars or something along the kind of lines which is you know a lot cheaper than i would have expected them to be i was meant to be maybe a bit more expensive than that but for 800 dollars and for considering what they look like they look fucking incredible i really really like them um again oakley's are really it's not something you see a lot of people wearing nowadays at all um maybe it's because of supreme because there was a period remember supreme kept doing collaboration with oakley's all the time and then now they're starting to do their own in-house sort of um, glasses collaboration, which they tend to quite often, right? I remember reading an j- interview with um, James Jebbia talking about his collaboration, with Supreme collaboration with North Face. The reason why they do it with North Face because they're not able to manufacture that level 
of a product, right? That high level of product. So they would rather partner up with somebody and make something really good and then do their own thing and make it subpar. So it seemed like in the beginning when they were collaborating with Oakley that they weren't necessarily at the level of operation or production where they could, you know, produce a high level glasses. But now since they've kind of, you know, iterated, iterated, iterated and become more successful over time, they've suddenly become able to do that kind of level of collaboration. So that's why you probably don't see the Oakley collaborations with them so much. And that might be in the reason why overall oakley glasses aren't as popular as they would be back in the day because you know they're not as many collaborations going around because you know remember this collaboration with every sort of street brand happening at the time supreme was doing it same as what was happening with casio right when casio watches was everywhere now you don't really see casio's collaborations as much as you did in the past so not a regular person on the street isn't really wearing a casio that much but i think these glasses from oakley um, and vetterman look fucking amazing and again a good compliment to what um demna was doing at balenciaga with the new glasses that i think debuted recently that launched a little cap collection i think in dover street market but again um if i had the funds and if it was something that would be available there's something that hundred percent wear in a fucking heartbeat really really nice and again maybe a, a good little um a good little compromise with them would maybe be the heron preston nike glasses that he did recently they might be a good option to do as well um but again these are look fucking awesome and play into the whole 90s revival that we're seeing happening in the late um recently now in the last couple of years and the last few years actually in fashion overall but yeah i recommend check them out um Vetema and oakley collaborations from spring summer 19 um we hide that one then we go to the next time oh okay so um this is an interesting collaboration or interesting little project uh nike have decided to i think i read an article recently i'm gonna maybe go on the next tab but supposedly air max day has been cancelled or they're changing the way they do air max day and kind of promoting air maxes um certain air max models within a certain city and then kind of you know ha in order to kind of harness or foster community just more bullshit wanky Oh, there's a crane here somewhere doing something. Um, just more bullshit, wanky marketing speak from Nike. You know, they're trying to re, you know, rejig the thing. MX Day, MX Day is gay. Always has been. Always shit. It doesn't make any sense. They're just regurgitating retro models and trying to, you know, sell them to sneakerheads as limited edition to get them to queue up so they can use it as marketing material and justify their overinflated wages. Whatever it is, right? But um, this little shoe that I've seen them do, um, a little homage to Berlin, is incredibly weird and w interesting, and I don't really know what what the point of it is. I saw something mentioned the other day that supposedly this is a collaboration with Honey Dijon, the DJ, but I don't. Again, that doesn't make any sense to me. In the press, I think in the it, again, I don't really r read what hype beast write in the articles because usually it's not anything of any sort of note um, or merit for that mark. But let's see what they've written about this collaboration here. Um, Nike takes what's it here? Nike takes a historic trip to Germany with a Nike Air Max 180 B or N, right? Um, featuring neon spades, shades of green, pink underneath a grey mesh. The fusion was created as a ode to the Japanese of Berlin, celebrated color life and brutalist architecture, which again I don't understand. With an actual combination of black, neon green, transparent white, the words unity and freedom are plastered all in caps to remind the club's musical power. Begin the now they're gonna drop um mx day 26th of april of march in berlin retailers first followed by a wider release so i guess what they're going to do over overall they're gonna again it's just you know just if you're gonna do this whole like community fostering thing just release them only in berlin they're gonna release them first in berlin release them later afterwards why just do just have just have certain collections launch in their location that they're meant to launch in and then that's it and then that way you can actually foster real organic um desirability people are actually going to want to buy these shoes they're going to want to fly over to berlin they're going to want to maybe uh, proxy a shoe and get it shipped over that's what's going to happen <gasps> again i don't know whatever and again why they want emma <sighs> if you go to berlin right the first thing you notice is that people that go to clubs or that hang around don't really wear bright colored trainers. It's not really a thing because most of the people that go to these nightclubs or these warehouse spaces, they're fucking dirty as fuck, right? They're grimy. They're amazing places, but they're grimy as fuck. Just even to get there, they're not the most, you know, cleanest of streets, right? The spaces are really dirty and grimy. People are spilling drinks and beer and piss all over the place. So the, the idea that you'd go into a nightclub wearing white Air Force Ones is a bit weird, right? So in the same reason why you wouldn't necessarily wear um, suede upper Air Max 180s with mesh on them, right? They're going to attract dirt like a fucking vacuum. It doesn't make it, or suck up there like a fucking vacuum. It doesn't make any sense, right? Why you'd have a colorway of a Berlin shoe encapsulated like that? It doesn't really work well. Um, the great, the best example I saw of a Berlin kind of inspired shoe was that Adidas that they did recently, where they took the colors from the um, 
the subway and um, from the upholstery on the subway and kind of adopted those of the color of the, of the industry of the, i forgot what it was it might have been a zx or something on the lines that worked in some regard but this is like huh why a 180 why this color it doesn't make any sense unity do you, you don't need to say unity in berlin that that's like part of their dna right it's not even something they even preach about exclusivity like that's the reason why you berlin is such one of the amazing cities in the world because pe everyone is able to go there and be exactly who they want to be in a free um safe space and it's just like why a 180 why that colorway um why on air max one air max day and again if you go to berlin you don't really see many people wearing air maxes either outside of sneakerheads right it's just not really a thing that you see general people wearing and it's just again just like you know just ineptitude of these companies sometimes when it comes to the release of these trainers you're like what does this even mean like i I'm, i'd hate to think what they're going to do with their um london shoe i'd hate to think is it going to be an air max one or some bullshit and they're going to do it the colors of the fucking uh, london sky the grayness the brutalist I was like, come on anyway enough about it said the better it's going to come out on the 20th of march for those of you guys that buy every single air max regardless of the colorway you're going to buy it anyway but i was skipping that one um Next on the list here, oh, actually, no, I don't want to speak about um, uh, Keith Flint, but the cause of death of Keith Flint has been confirmed. But, you know, that's too much hardness, too sad to kind of talk about. Um, next on the, on the docket here, we've got um, Jerry Lorenzo debuted a new, a new colorway of, the, um, of his Fear of God 1 uh, for Nike. Um, I like what Jerry Lorenzo is doing, right? I think it's a general thing most people do anywhere in general um, or most kind of style influencers where most of the colorways are being announced or being revealed when he's in motion, when he's um, in and around town going to senior events. And this is a great little tie-in. I think they were promoting the Nike women's or the US, the Nike, is it the US women's um, kits or whatever they may be called, the thing in Paris, whatever, launch. And during that thing, obviously, um, Nike flew out of um, uh, Joe Lorenzo being one of their main collaborators. And he obviously went there and debuted a new colorway of the shoe. Um, again, something that I, I really like the shoe, man. I'm really a big fan of it. I think he really smashed it and did a really good job. It might not be something that I generally would wear day to day, but I think the way he's married them up with these uh, sweatpants, I'm assuming is are uh, things that are part of his kind of overall collection, which I'm definitely sure they are. Um, and then he's got the Visvim kerchief um, jacket, which is, you know, one of my favorite pieces from Visvim out there. It's fucking grossly, grossly overpriced, but you know, that that's what Visvim do. But also it's nice as well that he actually wears for tough from other brands. Right? He's just or not always wearing his stuff head to toe. He loves a bit of visdom here and there. Um, but these shoes look fucking awesome. I like the colorway. So it's like an all gray upper with like an off white or sale midsole. And the cage that wraps around this outside of the shoe is black. Um, again, it kind of gives it a more of an athletic 90s kind of off-court feel. And again, just looks fucking like a cool shoe. It's just like a really Jerry Lorenzo shoe. If he could make a perfect um, Nike for himself, this definitely would be the one. Um, again, um, no confirmation on the date of when it's going to be released. I like the little hit there with the white swoosh on the side. It's just a perfect little shoe that he made, isn't it? Um, no confirmation so far on what date it's going to be released, but just a little um, sneak peek of him walking towards the event. Um, the other day in Paris, and it looked fucking awesome. I'm a really big fan of what he did there with that shoot. Um, next on the list here, let's get this off the screen. Ba 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 ba. Ooh, my one of my favorite shoes ever, right? One of the things I kind of regret um selling um uh my um com uh defining moments pack um Jordans where it came, you know, you know that Jordan pack that came back in the day where one Jordan would be one number, the other would be the other, and they're both equal twenty three. I regret selling my Jordan four, but this is easily one of my favorite shoes of all time. Probably one of the shoes that kind of got me started into being a sneakerhead in general. This and maybe the Air Trainer one, right? The Cross Trainer, and this kind of looked like a development of the Cross Trainer. Again, one of Tinker Hatfield's best sneaker designs of all time. The Jordan four, one of the easiest, my best design colorways ever in my life, and the bread is out there with one of the best colorways out. I don't care what anyone says. So much so that you know every iteration of sneaker from even the stuff like this actually from even the um, the triple s has so taken inspiration from a bread right that colorway overall has come from the jordan colorway right that's that, that's how influential that sneaker was overall so i'm a big fan of the bread colorway of the jordan 4 um and it's coming back again now again i'm not somebody that's a big fan of jordan retros i think they they have over the years fleeced and oh uh, and kind of you know oversaturated the market when it comes to jordans i think there was a period in time where jordan brand were in his were in intent on sending out subpar after subpar material product retros and jordan fuses were still hoovering them up and then over time it kind of shifted and now jordan fans are kind of slowly but surely 
not wanting to buy some of the retro, which is why Jordan brands flood the market with crap after crap of sneakers out there. They don't really sell that well. Um, but I think they're, con they're kind of, you know, they're understanding or acknowledgement of the kind of fuck-ups they've done in the past and they're trying to rewrite the wrongs in terms of this model coming out now is good. It's going the right way. Um, uh, it may be a higher quality of the overfinished product and of naturally the, the most important thing I think for most uh, Jordan Retro brand enthusiasts is the fact that they're reintroducing um, the Nike Air logo on the back of the heel tab, which is something that you know a lot of us have kind of been feeling over, especially so much so that people go out, go and buy um, retros or no, sorry, they go and buy OGs or vintage pairs of Jordan 1s or Jordan 4s, Jordan 3s, and then kind of glue on the kind of newer soles in order to make sure they can wear them just so they have the Nike Air on the back. And for me, the most important thing of the retro is the toe box. This front bit here, usually when they make them, especially the last that they're using nowadays, I've heard loads of conflicting stupid reports that they got rid of the old last and they can't retool them again. But you know, Nike make a billion dollars every year, probably off of Air Forces alone. They can they can afford to make you to make a new uh, tooling or new uh, masters or whatever shapes they use to make of the Jordan so that you can have that more of a flat silhouette. Because usually when they make them, they always have that weird banana toe at the front and it looks really bizarre if you get them even if so, so so much so that i have to always buy my jordans a size below once like half size down just so i can get that flat toe but then obviously that quite that then results in my knuckles scrunching up at the front i really hope that they kind of figure it out and sort it out in the end um these shoes from the look from the looks of it look like they figured it out um again i can't tell because i'm not sure if they stuffed the toe box um but they look okay from here I'm not sure if these images are actually from Nike. I don't think they are from Nike because, you know, the laces are fucked up. They didn't even do the laces again. That's something you always look at when you're looking at sneakers. Like, come on, relace, relace the shoe, man. Um, sell it to us properly, but I don't care. It's got Nike on the back of it. I'm going to buy it. That is, that's that's basically the end of the matter, isn't it? Um, they're going to come out on May 11th. I select retailers, $200 each. Um, again, for me it's like a no-brainer for over some sneakers are gonna be like oh again with these fucking retros i know some of you guys are bored of it but i've always been a big fan of jordan 4 retros especially um the bread colorway with nike on the back of it and you know good quality materials a flat out a flat kind of like toe box that is kind of in profile or in kind of parallel with the ground and not bending up like a banana i'm going to instantly buy so again check those out if that's something you're wearing kind of finish coming out may 11th may 11th for the jordan 4 breads um next on the docket here let's quickly move on time is the, the essence nope we don't want to talk about that Oh, carry more spring summer nineteen Japan, right? It's fucking weird, right? So I saw this little, I saw this featured in Hype Beast, and it just caught me adrift. I didn't know this was a thing, but if you're a runner or if you're someone that is involved in the fitness space and you go and buy fitness equipment, you'll know if you go to Sports Direct, one of the brands that they have there that's always on sale that you can always buy loads of kind of running gear from. It's carry more, right? And it's usually just bullshit stuff like leggings and tops and stuff. It doesn't really last that long. Um, I watched them a few times, and it fucking it goes out shape you get holes in your fucking tight sooner or later but it appears as if carry is actually you know a legit brand that might have its own little purple label uh, i mean um look face purple label edition in japan so much so that they've got this full collection that's been featured on hypebeast which is fucking bizarre honestly it's like seeing um salinger um have a japan edition featured on hypebeast it doesn't make any sort of sense but again i guess you know in japan it's maybe looked at as a high bar brand but i know here for sure if you want to get like a cheap running bag or cheap running trainers this is where you get them from when you're at um what you would call it when you go to uh sports direct here in the uk um, but so far it looks fucking awesome just like your regular japanese uh streetwear sort of look loads of great little jackets like this here on the right it looks fucking incredible right really fucking good stuff man it's better than most of the stuff you see in most streetwear brands out at the moment and again this is just carry more regular stuff look at the backpack even that was a, like really good like really fucking good stuff um again i'm not sure why this is i'm not sure if this has always been a thing um they've had their own little japan edition but this was fucking cool really really cool um carry more japan edition check it out i see it available now and oh look at those trousers panel trousers mustard on the front with a little navy detail on the back that looks incredibly cool i love that that styling detail with the orange sandals as well wow again i'm not sure if this has always been a thing but it looks fucking awesome i love everything about this so i reckon again i recommend you check it out um kind of more japan edition i'm not sure why this is i'm not sure if it's something i've missed over time um 
Again, I'm not going to read the uh, the press release there because usually they don't be providing any sort of new information. But if you guys know of any reason why this is, exists and why we get the shitty stuff in Sports Direct here in the UK, let me know um, because this looks fucking cool. Again, it'd be hard to get hold of to proxy all this stuff from the from Japan. This this is probably my favorite jacket here. Oh, load up again, shit. These slideshows are oh, so annoying on Happy Sunday. Um, I'm trying to get this up again. Where is it? Yeah, this jacket here is my favorite. I think overall. This like grey jacket with the massive po pocket detail. Look, look at that look. That is just, that's quintessential Japan, isn't it? Right? Um Quintessential Japan, like a camper cat, a nice of a nice kind of rain jacket, a side pouch, some short socks, and some ACG ish type trainers. Again, brilliant, brilliant collection. I recommend you check it out. It looks really fucking cool. Um carry more. Japan Spring Summer nineteen.